Hi everyone, welcome to this presentation. Today we are going to continue with more simulations using QSpice. So today we are going to see how to implement a digital control of a back dc, -DC converter. For this we will employ the results that we have seen in previous videos. So we will see first the back converter with analog control implemented in LTSpice. Then we have seen in other video how to implement implement the back converter with digital control in LTSPICE and finally today we will see how to implement the back converter with digital control in QSPICE and we will compare the simulation in QSPICE with the simulation in LTSPICE. So these are relevant videos on this topic. We have seen LTS Spice number 7 with the analog simulation of the back converter in closed loop and how to obtain the closed loop response of the converter. In video LTS Spice number 14, we saw how to create a Simulink compatible control library, including some elements to do digital control simulations of DC DC converters and we employed these elements to implement a digital control of a back converter in LTSPICE. So today we are going to focus on QSPICE. So these are two relevant videos. This one, QSPICE number one, introduction on how to create new components. And the second one that we have seen is how to implement two basic elements in the digital control of power converters. One is how to create a digital PWM signal to drive the switches. And the second one is how to do the signal sampling of the analog signals in order to implement the digital control. For example, how to measure the output voltage and how to get the sampling of the output voltage when we want to regulate the output voltage of our converter. So this is the converter that we are going to use as an example. This is the back converter with all the elements. Here we have the different values. We are measuring the output voltage and then using here a PI compensator, sending the output of the compensator to the PWM generator and then to the switch. So in this video, LTS by number seven, we saw how to design this compensator. This is the frequency response of the compensator and this is the body diagram of the, this response of the uh, PI compensator. Then in this video, Power Electronics number three, we saw how to do an ultra fast modeling of DC DC converters in continuous conduction mode. And particularly, we saw how to obtain the different transfer functions of the back converter. So from it we can get this transfer function with the perturbations of the duty cycle at the input and the perturbations of the output voltage at the output. So this transfer function is represented here in red. So with this we have everything because we know the transfer function of the voltage sensor here is equal to 1. We have the transfer function of the PWN generator is 1 over the peak to peak voltage of the ramp that we use in the PWM generator and then we know the transfer function of the compensator. So in this video, LTS is number seven, we saw how to do everything to design the values of the compensator and we get this value for the ratio of the resistances and this value for the zero of the compensator. So with this, we obtained the values of the capacitor and the resistance R2, the resistance R1 to implement our PI compensator. This is the circuit that we employed to do the simulation in LTSPI. So here we have the converter. We are measuring the output voltage. This is the implementation of the PI compensator. We are limiting the output between 0 and 8 volts. So we have a limiter. Then we have here the comparator to generate the PWM signal. This is 
the Sawtooth waveform, 10 volts peak to peak. And here we can see the results of the simulation. This is the output voltage, so we can see that the response is quite good. We are getting 5 volts here at the output. In blue here we have the output of the compensator, so in this part the compensator is saturated to the maximum value, 0 0.8 for the duty cycle and then at this point the compensator enters in linear operation so it's regulating the output voltage and in red we have the sawtooth waveform. So we can see that the total elapsed time for this simulation is very low, it's only 0 0.6 seconds which is very good. Then in video LTS Spice number 14, we saw how to create different components to implement the digital control of DC DC converters. And we employed these components to implement a digital control for the back converter. So for this, we started from the analog compensator, as shown here, and using the testing approximation, as we know then we can obtain the transfer function of the discretized compensator, as shown here in this expression. And finally, from this expression, we can obtain the algorithm that we have to implement in order to implement the compensator, which is shown here. YK is the current sample of the compensator that we are going to calculate with this expression using the previous sample of the output of the compensator. This is a constant times the error, the current value of the error, which is the difference between the reference voltage and the current sample of the output voltage. Then we have this other constant and this is the previous sample of the error. So for the compensator that we have designed, we have these values for the time constants and T is the sampling period. In this first example, we are not going to take into account the effect of the sampling period, but maybe in future videos we will deal with the effect of the value of the sampling period. So this is how we implemented the digital control of the back converter in LTS Spice. So we are measuring here the output voltage at this point. Then we format the output voltage between 0 and 5 volts. So here at the nominal output voltage of 5 volts here, we are going to have at this point 2.5 volts. So we use this AD converter that we implemented here in this library to get the digital value of the output voltage. So the reference now here, because this is an 8-bit AD converter, so the value is in the middle, so the reference is 128. With this we generate the error, and these elements here are to generate a one unit delay for the input signal, as we saw in the, in the video in LTSPICE number 14. So with all this we can implement our compensator, our digital compensator. Here is the output of the digital compensator and this is a digital ramp generator that we also implemented in that video in LTSPICE number 14. So finally here we get the PWM output for the switch. The selected sampling period in this case is one microsecond is generated with this clock which is introduced in the different blocks. And here are the results of the simulation. This is the output voltage. We can see that is quite similar as with the analog compensator. And here we have the output of the regulator in blue. So we can see again that is quite similar. We have no saturation because we have not used limiter at the output in this case. So it should be limited around 200 bits which correspond to 0 0.8. So it could be again quite similar and in red we have the digital ramp. However, in this simulation there are many more components to simulate many more things. So the total elapsed time was 63.5 seconds, which is much higher than using the analog compensator. 
So now let's see the implementation in QSpice. Here we have again the back converter with the same elements. We have other diode and other MOSFET, but anyway, it's almost the same. We are using here our controller as a C++ module. We have here the output for the Sawtooth waveform. So to see the Sawtooth waveform, this is the PWM signal that we are sending to drive the switch with this voltage source here. This is an output to see the sampled output voltage and this is an output to see the discrete signal corresponding to the duty cycle. So this is the output of the compensator before being compared with the sawtooth waveform. Everything is done here internally in the C++ module. And this is the clock as we have seen in the previous video to do the sampling. So in principle, we are selecting here a sampling period equal to one microsecond, as in the case of the simulation in LTS bytes. And then we are measuring the output voltage to do the operation in closed loop. And this is an input of the C++ module to measure the output voltage. So now let's see the C++ source for this right click on this module and then C++ interface open C++ source. And here we have the C++ code. We are including the CMath library. Here we are defining several constant, the reference voltage, 5 volts, the switching period, which is 5 microseconds, so the switching frequency is 200 kilohertz. The sampling period is 1 microsecond. These are the constants for the compensator. And here we have the current duty cycle sample, the previous duty cycle sample, the current output voltage sample, the previous output voltage sample, the current error sample, and the previous error sample. This is generated by the program. And here we can see the main program. This is the generation of the Sawtooth waveform, as we saw in previous video. Here we are detecting the sample corresponding to the current sampling period and do the different actions that we need to implement the digital compensator. In this part, we are updating the previous samples of the duty cycle, the output voltage and the error. Here we are getting the new samples, the current samples of the output voltage and the error. This expression calculates the new value of the duty cycle as we have seen in previous slides. So this is the current value of the duty cycle calculated from the previous value of the duty cycle, the current value of the error and the previous value of the error as we have seen before. Here we are implementing a limiter for the duty cycle. So if the duty cycle is higher than 8, Note that the ramp is 10 volts peak to peak here. So this means that the duty cycle is going to be limited to 0 0.8. And here the lower limit is 0 0.1. Then in this part, we are adjusting the value of the duty cycle, as we saw in the previous video, by comparing the current duty cycle with the sawtooth waveform and generating the PWM signal. And finally, with these two statements here, we are showing at the output of the module the sampled output voltage and the sampled duty cycle. And this is everything. Now we can go and compile DLL and run. And now we can see the results here. The first thing that we see is that the elapsed time for this simulation is only 9.2 seconds, much lower than in the case of LTS Vice, which was longer than one minute. So now let's see, for example, the output voltage. So we can see how the output voltage is regulated to 5 volts. Let's add some window to see more things. Here we can see the output of the duty cycle, the output of the compensator. So here we are seeing how 
the compensator is also working even we are not getting into the saturation the duty cycle is always lower than 0 0.8 we can take a look also here at the sawtooth waveform so we can see how we are comparing with the output of the compensator and the sawtooth waveform to generate the duty cycle we can add even another window and see here the PWM signal so we see that everything is working well and maybe we can show here together with the real output voltage the sample output voltage we, we have the sample output voltage here at this point so we can see that because we have a very short sampling period both waveforms are almost the same but if we do a zoom here we can see the difference between the sampled signal and the actual signal at the output of the converter maybe we can add here even the sampling clock so we can see how at this instance we are doing the sampling of the of the output voltage so in principle everything is working well the simulation results is very similar to LT spice and also very similar to the analog implementation now we are going to try to make a step at the input voltage and another step at the output, at the load, to see the response of our digital compensator. So here we are going to do a simulation of an input voltage step. Here we are adding this voltage, V3. So at the instant 400 microseconds, the uh, voltage, this voltage source is going to generate a step up of 2 volts. We are now running the simulation up to 800 microseconds and everything is the same. The code here in the C++ module is exactly the same. So now we can run the simulation and see the results. So let's see for example the output voltage. So we can see the initial transient and then at this point we have the step up at the input voltage. So maybe we can add another window and represent here also the input voltage. So we can see how the step is shown here and maybe we can add another window and see the output of the compensator so we can see that again everything is working well and we have a good response and the steady state after the transient is again 5 volts we can see again here the sampled output voltage in the same manner so everything is working correctly and finally let's do a simulation of a step at the output at the load so initially we have connected at the output to ohms and at 600 microseconds we are closing this switch and then we will be connecting this other resistor of two ohms in parallel so in total the load resistance is one ohm so everything is the same now the simulation goes up to 1200 microseconds and then we can run the simulation and here we can see the results once the simulation has finished so the total time now simulation time was 16.5 seconds now we can see the output voltage so this is the transient maybe we can add another window we can show here the signal for the switch. So here we are activating the switch and doing the transient. In this window, we can see the output corresponding to the duty cycle of the compensator. Now we are getting here almost the limit of 0 0.8. But in principle, everything is working well. We are getting at the steady state here again, the 5 volts at the output. We can measure the output voltage, the sampled output voltage. So we can see that everything is working as expected. 
So finally, this is a comparison of both solutions, the simulation of the digital control of the back converter using LTS bytes is much more complicated. We need more elements because at the end we are doing the simulation of a digital control in an analog simulator. And here we have the QSPICE implementation with the module, the C++ module. And here we have the program, the C++ program, which is much more similar to how we implement this in a real microcontroller or DSP. So in any case, it was fun to develop all these blocks and be able to do the implementation of a digital control in an analog simulator. But in the future, I think that is much better to do digital control using QSPICE. The simulation is much faster and we are implementing everything in a much more similar way as we do in a real application. Well, this concludes this video today. I hope that you find this information useful. Please let me know if you have any comment or question. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye now.